Hey there, are you considering rebuilding your business and wondering, do I have what it takes to rebuild a business? And how do I even start? Ask no more, because this live stream will be providing you some fantastic and practical tips on how to rebuild your business to become even more stronger compared to what it was before. Stay tight, grab a drink, and we'll be back right after this, okay? Welcome everyone to yet another intriguing and innovative series called Entrepreneur Series. I'm your host, Connie. Welcome. If this is your first time, please make sure you click that subscribe button because we are live right now on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, click that subscribe button and make sure you share and like this video, okay? And guys, if you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you also share this video. You can even create a watch party. I think Facebook have this cool feature where you create a watch party. So make sure you click that watch um, party and share this video so your friends can come join in and the fun that we are about to have today because we are about to have a good time okay but before we begin guys i want to know how you guys doing okay let me know in the comment section down below how are you if you are doing well make sure you put thumbs up or say i'm blessed and also let me know where you're watching from what state what country what city let me know on the comment section so i can shout you out okay on the screen so make sure you let me know go ahead and type in where you're watching from for me i'm, I'm streaming straight from Houston, Texas. So if you are also in Houston, make sure you type in Houston. Uh, whatever state, what country, Nigeria, Australia, USA, whichever one, type it down below. Okay, I want to hear from you guys. And I hope you guys are doing, you know, well. I hope you guys are safe today or well today. You know, well, if you are alive, if you, there's, if you are alive, so that means there is hope for you. Okay, so we should rejoice and we should be happy guys okay okay why you guys type in and let me know where you're watching from we're gonna go ahead and commit this live stream to god almighty because we can't do anything without him because he's the maker and finisher of our lives okay okay i see so okay we have people um let's shout out to those that are watching oh we have jason hi jason from los angeles california hi jason guys make sure you check out Jason podcast is Loveology podcast. And Jason, go ahead and type in your podcast name. Guys, go check out him out. And they do have cool, you know, they talk about everything related with relationship. So if you're single or even married and you want to learn things about relationship, go check out Loveology podcast. And we have um and Miss Angela Okafor um, from Houston. Hi, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, guys, let me know where you're watching from. Go ahead, let me know where you're watching from. What state you're watching from? What city? What country to? Let me know. So we're going to commit this live stream to God Almighty because he's the maker and finisher of our lives. So the Bible verse of today is from Mark 10, 27. And I read, Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Amen, sister, amen, brother. Guys, whatever it is you might be facing right now, and it's so is related even with the topic that we're about to discuss about rebuilding your business. I know COVID have messed up some business, you know, have to force people to start from afresh. And a lot of people started from the beginning. So um, don't worry, when you have God with you, everything is possible. It might seem like it's a lot right now, trust me, it will get better, okay, guys? So let me know where you're watching from, what state you're watching from, still down below. Okay, we have someone from um, Seattle. Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for joining us. And then we have um, Jason um, did type in Loveology. That's his um, um, website, www.lovologypodcast.com. Guys, go check him out. And then we have Miss Angela saying amen. Thank you so much. And guys, so um, make sure that you commit everything to God once you do that. Everything you put your hands in, everything you lay your hands in will be possible. Amen? Amen. Okay, guys, um, without wasting any time, let's go ahead and um, begin this series. If you're wondering what this series is all about, 
this is an entrepreneur series. Give me a second. Okay. This is an entrepreneur series. It's a safe place or should be a safe place um, for us to discover different ways to make money. For example, starting a new business that can yield a profitable revenue. Think of this as a fresh start to a brighter future for you and your family. So you should expect um, this stream to be streaming, this um, series to be streaming live on Facebook every Saturday at 2.30 p.m. So eventually I will convert this to a podcast just in case if you can see through it. Don't worry, you can still listen to it on the podcast tomorrow. It will be releasing tomorrow at 3 p.m. on Sunday. So make sure you come back and listen to the podcast form, okay? Also, expect guests that are expertise on their individual field coming to this show to share some of their wisdom and knowledge and in turn educate us on how to run a successful business. Remember to ask questions, okay? On this live stream, let me know what you are thinking. If you have any questions regarding the topic, go ahead and let us know down on the comment section so we can um, respond to, because we like this um, live stream to be very engaging, you know, and we will both communicate, okay? So guys, let me know where, um, where, whatever you're thinking during this live stream. Okay, topic of today. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So topic of today is rebuilding, okay? And uh, rebuilding, it could be rebuilding your business, rebuilding your life. But I'm not talking about this alone. I do have a special guest with me today. He is the author of Upsurge, Wreckage to Triumph, Rebuilding Your Personal and Business Life. Also, he's the founder and president of Caliber Security Partners. Caliber was created in 2010 and provides cyber security services to an enterprise clients and in emerging technology companies. He sits in on the advisory board of 3P and T security recruiting, trade wire, and drug free business. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Tab Pierce. Let's go ahead and bring him on the screen. Hey, Hi, how are you? Tab. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. You know, I, I don't think there's anything else I could say other than you know your comment about with God, all things are possible. Yeah, I, yes. think, I think we can just end right there. But we can go on, but but that's perfect. There you go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we do have some technical issues. You know, those that are used to this, we know we this always happened, but Sorry about that. Let's go ahead. So how are you doing today? How is your day? How are you feeling today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. I uh, feel great. It's a beautiful Saturday. I'm up here in the uh, Seattle, Washington area. It's a beautiful rainy day, but uh, yeah, life's good. <laughs> life's great. That's good. That's good. So um, I'm sure you get this question a lot, but um, what prompted you to start your company? Because your company name is um, Caliber Security Serv Partner Caliber yeah. Security Partners. Yep. So, what yep. um, prompted mm -hmm. you to start your company that uh, that provides cyber security services? Well, I, I I do get that on occasion, and it, and and I I always kind of think about it before I respond because there's a lot of different reasons why I did it, why I started the company. Um. One of them was is I, I'd been in security for a long time and I'd done it for, you know, with, with a lot of other companies. My background is sales. And so I'd, I'd helped a lot of companies grow over the years. And uh, the company I was with had been acquired. And I kind of thought, you know, there's some things I don't like about working for other people. One is I don't like the buffer that's between me and my clients. I want to make sure I do what's right by my clients, not uh, not just my company or the company I was employed with. And, you know, I, I'd, I'd done it for years with various different companies. And I was kind of at a, at a crossroads of, you know, do I go and, you know, rinse and repeat and go do it again for another company that like I'd done before, or do I start my own? And so, you know, this isn't my first endeavor. This isn't my first uh, company I started, but it was my first cybersecurity firm. And, you know, that's kind of really what, you know, I, a combination of those things and just, you know, a general belief that I could do it better than uh, than the people that I had worked for previously. Wow. Wow. 
Well, um, I, I don't know. So did you actually study um, cybersecurity? Because why cybersecurity firm? Did you study that in school? No, um, no. <laughs> Uh, I actually, uh, my, my, uh, I, I never went to college, so uh, there was no internet or anything back in the days when I went to high school. So there was no studying anything like that. Um, you know, I just like a lot of people. You know, you stumble into something and you find out you're pretty good at it. And and I stumbled into security early on in my career and and uh, had an aptitude for it. Um, understanding of it. I mean, I'm not good enough where I could actually go out and provide the services, but I have a really strong team that does that. But it's just something, you know, I, I um, uh, that I understood, I gravitated to, I I had an experience with. So, um, so it was a real natural thing to start a company that I had knowledge and experience with. Wow, that's awesome. You say you didn't even go to school. To, to study cyber security and now you are running a firm that has to do with cyber that's that's just awesome like yeah. i don't think that, uh, uh, you should upload yourself for that because not uh, everyone can do that well you, you know i i think there's there's something that that we we tend to do in life and we we tend to stop ourselves and say yeah i really don't have the exp expertise or the experience or the knowledge or whatever it is to do something you, you just have to remember that right now where you sit, you don't have it, but that doesn't mean tomorrow or the next day or the next day that you can't gain what you need to do in order to start what you want to start. Yeah, that's true. That is so encouraging. You're right. Cause for me, I didn't go to school to study mass communication or podcast. I just dive into it and yeah. look at me now. So, you know, we just have to, you know, try it. Don't discourage yourself and think you can't do it. So we do have some people in the comment section. Um, let's go ahead and see. We have Jason say, I'm in sales too, and I feel the same way. He was talking about you uh, when you were you used to work for people. Yeah, and, and, and I, I imagine Jason feels that way sometimes when you're, when you're in a situation where you're selling and you, know, you, you really know that what you want to do is the right thing by your client. And you've got a, you know, you've got a company that buffers you and your client. And you've got to, you know, you got to go and do what's best for the company and not necessarily what's best for your client. And you know, if you're if you're good at sales and if you're, um, you know, an, an honest and upstanding individual, you know, that doesn't necessarily sit right. So I imagine Jason probably has the same uh, experience that I do. Yes, yes, you're right. That's why I didn't do sales because i know i probably won't be good at it i feel like if my client will read through me and know that i'm lying to them so it's not so for just, everyone so you me. just don't lie that's how you get out of it that's how you get past <laughs> that you just don't lie now you don't have to cover no. anything up <laughs> well yeah um yeah i do understand um that and we also have here john saying that uh he he loved your book well, we can talk about his book sometime during this live stream. So we'll definitely we'll find out why John loves his book so much. But, but, but and thanks, then, John. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We also have um, D Word say, we love your book. Okay. Awesome. We see a lot of people uh, saying they love your book. I can't wait to find out about this book. <laughs> but guys, <laughs> yeah. we can continue. So our, our topic today is rebuilding. And uh, which will encompass is like rebuilding your personal life, your business life. And we are living in the new norm due to COVID that hits us early this year for those of us living in the U.S. A lot of business has shut down due to the pandemic. Small business owners suffer a lot from this, you know. My aim on, on, um, my aim on this topic is for anyone experiencing losing their job or having to rebrand their business as a result of COVID to walk away from listening or watching this episode enlightened and motivated to start afresh with no fears at all. So tap for a business entity or individual to consider rebuilding um, their business in the first place. That means something was um, existing before it was destroyed or damaged, okay? So you have rebuilt your business at some point. What occurred or, or, or caused you to consider rebuilding your business? Well, um, you know, you know, life, life has a way of teaching you lessons, whether you want to want to have them or not. And um, 
you know, I, our company caliber was, we were doing great. We we're, we we're at our best revenue year that we had ever been in. Uh, things are going really well. There was a series of things that happened, uh, you know, contract that, that didn't come through that was supposed to come through us carrying eight additional people for a couple of months. Um, and, uh, you know, just having a business unit that wasn't functioning at, at the level that it needed to function. So those things kind of all, cons um, kind of came together and, uh, ultimately we, we made a poor choice to take out a bad loan to cover up, uh, or, or to cover a lot of those things. And all of that kind of started to spiral it out of, uh, out of, out of play, out of place, uh, out of sync. And we were uh, in debt $750,000 to 18 different creditors. And so, you know, once all, once, you know, I was so gung ho, I was so pushing forward that, that um, when it, when I finally became aware of that, it was, it wasn't like a gradual thing. It was just like one of those things where uh, that awareness happened pretty much in one day. And, you know, there, there's a lot to it, a lot of the emotional side of that, but I was really left with, do I close the door? Do I rebuild? And, and a lot of, a lot of peers, a lot of people I talked to said, you know, close your doors, go start something else, go get a job, go do something different. And I, um, you know, I, there's all these like, people are like, wow, it's really great that you chose to rebuild and you really, you know, you, you, you dove in and you did it. Um, I did it because 250000 of that was owed to the IRS and the IRS does not forgive debt. No. And so uh, my greatest pain and agony in my life at that point in time was caliber, uh, which is one of my greatest joys now. But we'll get we can always get to that later. But it was one of my biggest, you know, pains. But it was also my my hope of getting outside of that IRS debt. So that was the initial push as to why I decided to rebuild instead of closing down. Wow. Wow. You mentioned about debt, like you guys had some debt and, uh, and I'm sure there's also more, there's more, there's, there's some more outcomes that came out of that, you know, apart from you owing people debt, what are some things I'm sure it kind of, uh, you know, move through like your personal life. I'm sure it affected you in your personal life. Yeah. So can you tell us how that affected you when it comes to that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you, it's it's funny. I tell this, and when I tell it, I smile, and people are like, you know, it's kind of weird that you smile about it, but I'm past it. And so there's all of these, there's all these like uh, experiences and all of these um, fantastic outcomes that came from these horrendous things. That's why I smile. But, you know, when it came down, when all this kind of broke, uh, I, don't, I don't watch TV, but I remember turning on the TV set, sitting in front of the TV set after work for probably a week or two weeks and, and just staring off into space, not watching TV, but just all these things running through my head, all of these horrible outcomes, all of these, um, uh, you know, you know, our mind never goes, Hey, what are, what are the positives? It always goes to, what are the negatives? I mean, I, you know, I thought I was going yeah. to jail. I thought I was going to go to jail for, you know, tax evasion. Uh, attorney said, now nah, people don't go to jail for what, you know, for, for only back taxes, but all of these thoughts ran through my head. And so it was just this real, you know, deep feeling that I was a fake and I was a fraud that I mean, I was vulnerable. And, um, uh, you, you know, all of those things were, were really what, you know, was prevalent early on. And, um, you know, it, it didn't drive me, it dragged me down and it, it held me down. Wow. So you, probably kind of, you fell into a little bit of a depression during that time, right? Oh yeah. I, I, I fell into yeah. quite a bit of it. Um, and, and it was a gradual, I probably spent, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know exactly, but, but I, I bet a couple of years in one state or another of, of depression and just kind of beating myself up, wondering if I had made the right decision to continue on and all of that. It, it was a gradual wow. thing where I started to go. Yeah. I think I, I think I have this. I think I can do it. And then I started to get my, 
you know, I started to become like my wife says, you know, you, I, I became the, my old self and I kind of put off <laughs> that, put off that, yeah. that temporary self. Wow. Okay. So great conversation so far. You mentioned going through that self doubt, depression and host of others. Is it safe to say that when you started rebuilding your business, you have to do some work on yourself first. And what are the steps you took to rebuild yourself? Well, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think about it because, you know, there, it was blurry between having to rebuild my business and my company and rebuild myself. And that, that, that's really a kind of a blur um, be, because early on, um, well, during the process, uh, my, um, uh, my self-worth, my value, my, my belief in who I was, was tied with my company. So if my company went down, I felt like I was going down. Company went up, I felt like I was going up. But no more. I, I'm I'm yeah. I'm not I'm not my company. But I was. I, yeah. I allowed I allowed that to be. But mm-hmm. part of it was um, you know, I needed a few wins. I needed some wins along the way. I needed some things to go right. And in order for me to do that, I had to I had to make some real uh, some real tight decisions. Like, you know, I I I was so depressed that I would just say, today all i'm going to do is make it through today today is the only day i'm going to make it through so i'm going to i'd look and i'd say these are the things i'm going to do today at the end of the day if i go if i go to bed at night and i put my head on the pillow i want to be able to say that i accomplished everything that i wanted to accomplish it, it doesn't have to mean that anything spectacular happened but that today i did it tomorrow I'm not even worried about tomorrow i'm just worried about today i'm going to make it through today and hopefully I wake up tomorrow and I'm like, I'm going to do it again. But for me, it was always, you know, how do I make it through today? And once I started to do that, you know, mm-hmm. I would start to, to have little wins. And those little wins would allow me to start to slowly rebuild. And, you know, that, that rebuild, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, so when people are like, hey, you know, think positive or whatever. And it's like, OK, hey, that's great you know, Mm -hmm. until my mind starts to drift and the mind does drift. And so, you know, it's a, it's a gradual and constant rebuild that you have to do on yourself. Yes. So what I'm hearing then is that you have to, you have to learn to forgive yourself and take one step at a time. That's basically the process in summary. And and forgiving forgiving yourself is a challenge, but it is. You know, one of the things that you have to remember is that what happened in the past is in the past. And by living in the past, all you're doing is is reliving all of those mistakes. And so, you know, it's important that we keep an eye on the future. We're where where we're going. We have, we have, a, we, have we have to have clarity as to where we're going. But But you have to be able to say right now where I'm at. Things are good. I'm not going to drift back. I'm not going to drift back because mm-hmm. drifting back. I mean, if you were, you know, I mean, I mean, let's say you go back to high school and you're like, oh, I was a horrible person. I did, should have studied. I should have done this. Doesn't do any good. If you sit there and go, yeah, man, I was like, I was a star quarterback. You know, I was this. I was that. Doesn't do you any good. So we got to be really careful by by doing that and drifting back. And um, you know, for me, that was how I healed myself was telling myself. Go forward, don't go back. Yes, yes, that is so true. We have to look forward. You know, we can't change the past, but we can at least try to, you know, make amends in the future, in the present. Okay. So, guys, um, if you're just joining us, I'm gonna digress a little bit now. Sorry, but if you're just joining us, welcome to Venta with Connie Podcast Live Show. We are still talking about rebuilding with my guest Tab Pierce. Please feel free to pitch in your feedback on the comment section below uh, so we can um, you know, address your questions or any, any feedback you have. We, we welcome everyone, we welcome each one, okay? So guys, um, just continue to let us know how you're feeling down there in, in the comment section. So going back to our discussion, let's start to talk about the, the business side of things, okay? So what are some questions every founder should ask? Like founder, I'm talking about CEOs, should ask before rebuilding their business. 
Um, well, I, 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 I think one of the things that you have to do is look and say, you know, it, is the business worth rebuilding? You know, I mean, if, if this if this goes the way that I want it to go, uh, and, and we reach out the other end, is this a bill? Is this a business that's worth rebuilding? Because sometimes we get so caught up in rebuilding something or letting something go that um, uh, you know that the emotional side gets to you, and so we got to be careful to to yes. to to get a we, we got to be careful with letting our emotions make decisions for us. So we got to really try to be logical and we got to be able to go out and say, you know, what is it uh, that I'm really trying to accomplish? You know, um, and if I choose to rebuild, what does that mean for me personally? Um, and if I choose not to rebuild, what does that mean? And I think that to me is the key is, is to, um, allow yourself to ask really good questions so you can start yes. to get great answers and then and then you know you know ask and this is the key qualified ask qualified people to weigh in um, you know d don't get advice from people that have no experience that's the problem people have is that they ask you know they'll go to their mom mom what should I do and mom's <laughs> like you know let me cover you let me let me call you and, you know, you, you know, whatever you want, yeah. son, it's going to be good. You know, you got to get advice from the right people. But ultimately, after you've looked at everything, the decision falls to you, not anybody else. Yes. So you have to be prepared. You know, it, it, for, for me, it, it, it all revolves around sitting back and asking yourself good questions so you can get great outcomes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So basically what I'm getting is you have to ask the right questions and ask it to the right people that will tell you the truth, not those that will kind of uh, massage your ego or whatever to make you feel better, rather tell you the or, truth. So. Or, those that, or those that are just going to crap on your ideas because you get those too. Yes. More of those actually, yes. but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to watch out for those, okay? So, okay, um, um, great conversation so far. So how can um, founders and CEO review their business as fast as possible? So you can feel free to share some of your own experience, how you did yours. <laughs> how do you rebuild it as quick as possible? Um, you know, I, if, if anybody has any great ideas, I'd like to hear that. No, um, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a process. Um, you know, one of the things that I tell everybody is, you know, whenever I come up with an idea or whenever I make a plan, uh, anything like that, I, I can, I, I always try to be uh, conservative, realistic. Um, but at the same time, I try to, um, uh, you know, realize that no matter how realistic and conservative I am, I'm probably going to be about three times off. So with Caliber, I thought it was going to take us a year to rebuild. It took us three years to rebuild. So, um, wow. and, um, and, and the reason why I say, you know, do it, you know, I, I don't know how to do it as quick as possible. You know, Jason would probably agree with me on this. You know, the, the best way to, the, the best way to get yourself out of a situation, if you're in a rebuild like this is sell, 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 get out there and, and, and move product or move services. And that's what, you know, that's what got us through. And, you know, there, you know, in, in the book, uh, I mentioned at one point, you know, I, I don't know if we were lucky or good. Um, truth is much of what we experienced. I'm absolutely uh, a firm believer that it was that we were blessed that we, that we did all that we could do. And we made, we did, we took every effort that we possibly could we made every attempt that we could and and honestly i i tell you i feel like 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 we did everything we could and then god like said okay i'll take it the next level because things would happen and we'd look at each other and go okay made it that time now we have two more weeks until payroll so <laughs> you know, yeah just kind of just kind of uh -huh. realize that there, sometimes there's no quick fix it's long, painful, and absolutely worth it when you're done and you can look down and go, I, you know, I did that. I accomplished that. That, that was probably one of the greatest feelings I ever had. 
Wow. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Do we have some questions down below? Um, Jason asks, your expectation was one year, but it took three years. How do you know to keep going? Like, how do you keep yourself going through that process? Well, um, uh, pay the IRS last. <laughs> no, I mean, for, 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 for us, that, that was a, for, for us, that was part of it was, is that, you know, the, 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 the irony is, is the IRS was, was, and I tell people this that are like conspiracy theorists or that hate the government and they won't believe me, but the IRS was, was actually really, really good to work with. They, you know, they went out of their way to make sure that we had, that they could pave every possible way that they could in order for us to pay them back. So it wasn't like they were being selfless, but you, you know, a, a lot of it was Jason is just to kind of experience those wins. You know, we would, we would get a little bit further. We'd pay somebody off. We'd see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. And we started to see a pathway to our success. And once you see a pathway to your success and you start getting hope and you start getting a belief all of those things start to snowball inside of you. And pretty soon, you know, you, you, you look at it and you're like, wow, yeah, I can accomplish phenomenal things. I can do some phenomenal things, but you know, it's, it's the, it's the willingness to, you know, to, to go through those first phases and to allow yourself to pause, see what you've accomplished mm -hmm. and then build, continue to build more. Wow. Wow. That's such a great um, response to that. Thank you, Jason, for um, contributing. So um, I'm glad you mentioned about um, IRS was they are easy to work with because I would never guess that because I was worried for you when you said about when you mentioned the debt that you guys own. And I was like, how are you guys going to pay you know, IRS up? But, you know, well, I'm glad you said that they were easy on you guys. I, I won't spoil it because it's in the book, but there's a pretty cool story in the book about about our experience with the IRS and and um, uh, yeah, so I'll just leave, I'll just leave it at that. It was, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, well, let me rephrase that. It's a lot of fun to read it. <laughs> it wasn't a lot of fun to go through it. So yeah, well, okay, that's good. So I believe every disappointment is a blessing, you know, because like right now your company is growing. I'm sure nothing mm -hmm. in life is a coincidence. So COVID has happened and it's still here. There's still nothing we can do about it other than embracing our new norm. So what are some perks or positive things rebuilding a business can bring? You know, so you can share um, some of yours. So a couple of things. One is, um, you know, uh, I think it was, I think it was Keith Cunningham who said, never waste a good catastrophe. So we're in the middle of a catastrophe. What is it you can do in your life other than retract, pull back, complain, say, I coulda, woulda, shoulda, or this could happen, or if this didn't happen, this would happen. What is it you can do so you're not wasting a good catastrophe? So that's that's one of them. The other thing is, is that, you know, my company's doing right now is doing very well. Um, our catastrophe really happened you know, three plus years ago when, you know, when, when, when I wrote that book and when I released that book in May, I had no idea that it, the, the timing that it would have for a pandemic. Um, but, you know, the, the thing I would say is, um, you know, there, there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of people with different experiences, uh, different yeah. situations. You know, I mean, if you are, you know, if you're a restaurant owner or yesterday I spoke to a, a, a lady who her business was um, a limousine service that catered to uh, private travelers that as soon as all this happened, um, you know, her business basically went away. And, and how do you how do you recover from that? Um, you know, for her, it was a pivot. You know, she moved to a different city, uh, moved to a different state started a um, uh, working for a new company, creating a new business on the side. I, I think that, you know, we have to be willing to allow ourselves to not retract and to 
kind of be logical. I mean, we're going to be emotional. We're, we're, we're emotional beings, but as much as mm -hmm. possible, focus and, and, um, you know, look at what you can create. You know, I mean, if you, if you've got a business that's completely falling apart, take a step back and think of, you know, what could I possibly do differently? How can I completely pivot? Yeah. And, and those are things that we have to do because, because these are unique and trying times. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think to um, like for some business that have to now transition to online, you know, doing everything almost online. Um, some people might say that, oh my God, this is a lot. They have to learn about this. But if you think about the bright side of things, it helps you save money. I'm sure you don't need a lot to hire a lot of people to have your business online. It will help you save money a little bit and things will be a little bit faster, you know. Than waiting to ship and that others still be easier for you. I think I always like to look at this the brighter side of things. So, um, you know, we just have to keep pushing. Maybe this COVID thing opened a new alternative universe for you yeah. know for your business. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on Jason again here because he's another sales guy. So about 2007 yeah. <laughs> 2008, uh, you know, I was a salesperson working for a company. I remember sitting around at a table. It's a networking event, <clears throat> salespeople. There's about 10 of us there. And it was in the middle of um, the recession. All these, all these men and women were lamenting about how bad things were. And what we did is we sat around this. And I just remember going, I got to get out of here. Um, but we sat around a table and everybody lamenting about how bad they were going. So it was the misery loves company. It was the I'm going to say things that make me feel better. And I'm, I'm hoping that you reciprocate and go, yeah, man, my life's bad too. That way we can commiserate, we can live in our own pain. And I remember sitting back going, wow, we as salespeople are creating our own recession. And so we got to be careful of what we tell ourselves and who we associate with, because, because there's plenty of people that'll, that'll sit out there you know, at the bar and just sit there and drink and go, yeah, you know, I used to be a great salesperson. I used to be a great business owner. You don't need those. You get, you really got to get your head straight because that's the only way you're going to get through this. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Thank you so much for that um, encouragement. And uh, let me check the um, comment section and see what people are saying. Okay. Um, I think Jason is responding to you. He said, I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so tell my thoughts exactly. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, Jason Jason knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how you guys do it. The salespeople, I don't know how you guys do it, but some of them know how to talk. Oh my god, they will sell anything to you. They like you don't I feel like sometimes they make you pay for things they even really buy game to pay for, you know. You guys are good. <laughs> But um, let's now talk about your book. You know, we have been hinting about the book throughout this live stream. But I want us to go ahead and uh, dish out some of the, um, dish out some of the what the book is all about. You know, so you wrote a book called "On Surge, Upsurge: Breakage to Triumph: Rebuilding Your Personal and Business Life." That sounds like a fun read. You know, what are some takeaway from the book? Basically, what should a potential reader expect to learn? after reading your book? So when I started writing the book, um, I, I didn't set out and go, I'm going to be an author. I'm going to write this book. I, I really wrote, um, I, I wrote a chapter and I just remember, cause I've got a really kind of quirky personality. I just, I didn't write a chapter. I wrote this kind of, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, article, <laughs> whatever, to, to myself <laughs> to try to, to try to motivate yeah. myself about. It was about my thoughts and about how my how how my thoughts really, like really drove me and mattered and 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 all of that. And I just remember calling it chapter one when I saved it. And then another one I did was about like like this fire that you know I need to get this fire. I need to get I need to stoke the fire. I need to keep it going. I need to burn. I need to just keep it hot. I need to just keep doing it. And I wrote it and I called it chapter two. And then I just remember laughing going, I think I'm writing a book. And that's how the, that's kind of how the book started is it the book started just kind of as, you know, kind of fun idea, but the start of the book. And, and um, I don't know if anybody would know this, but 
without without knowing this piece. I mean, just by reading the book. But the start of it is really me being vulnerable, like you know, the, you know, because I started writing that book when I was in the midst of all of that stuff, oh, and then okay. and then the end of it was me coming out of it. So it goes from this this person who was vulnerable, trying to jack himself up and pump himself up to get out there and live life to this person um, that, um, you know, was, you know, really um, healed. I, maybe I wasn't a hundred percent healed, but I, but I really became the person I used to be. So that's kind of one of the things, the, the message, and, and I'm in the process of writing my second book, uh, which wow. I've tentatively, tentatively titled um, Outlast Everything. And that's the message that over time, you know, the, what I really kind of learned, what, what I learned in this experience was that there's a way to plan. There's a way to achieve all of your goals. And there's a way to achieve all of the things that you want to achieve in life. And I, and I, I break that down pretty, pretty detailed in the book, but it's, it's how do you plan? How do you prepare for, you know, looking at, you know, here's what I'm going to accomplish this year. And this is what I got to have to do this month, and this week, and this day, and these hours and that. That's really about that. So the message that I've, that I've learned is I've done ample speaking engagements and everything else was that, that really what I had done for myself was, was create a way that I could outlast everything. And so that's the message that if people can read this, it's like that, that, you know, that you can, you, you can learn to outlast anything and everything that comes into your life. Wow. So basically this book will help anyone that is feeling down, especially they're in the process of rebuilding their business, they think they can't do it. You know, they will read this book and feel a little motivated, you know, because you, did you tell your own story in the book too? Yeah. You know, when I, when I went to my editor and my editor um, was like, you know, you can't write a book like this. You either have to choose whether it's going to be an autobiography or choose if it's going to be self-help. And I'm like, I'm not freaking author, man. I don't have to do anything you say. I, I, I this can be whatever I want it to be. And so the, <laughs> the book, the, the book kind of, you know, it part of it is me talking about the things that I experience. The other part of it is, um, you know, me helping. And so, yeah, a lot of that story is is things, and that's like, you know, the, the I think the key to this uh, on this is that um, that that I'd like to get through to people is um and i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to come across sounding i want to sound confident i don't want to sound arrogant i've accomplished a lot of things in my life i've overcome a lot of things in my life you know they talk about people being born with a silver spoon in their mouth i was born with a plastic spork our family couldn't afford a plastic fork we couldn't afford a plastic spoon i got a plastic fork that was my uh, my spork that was my life and so <laughs> The, the point is, is all of these things that that I talk about in this book are not theoretical. These are things that, that a person has actually done, me being that person, but things that people can do themselves to really, like, rise up. Wow. I'm, get, I'm, getting, myself all ex I'm getting myself all excited <laughs> about this again. So, anyway. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to do my hands on that book. Well, guys, make sure you check it out. Upsurge, um, that's the name of the book. Upsurge, I think, um, let's see, what's the full name? Wreckage to Triumph, Rebuilding Your Personal and Business Life. I love the way you incorporated the personal life and the business life because both of them do tie together sometimes. Some people don't know how to, you know. I don't yeah. think, we, we like to have everything. I don't think we really know how to separate it that much. Yeah, you know, and that's- dream. What's that? I said, because this is like the business that you are eventually, I'm sure is like your dream. That's like your yeah. passion. So you kind of, you know, put your personal life in it too. Yeah. And, and I did, you know, I debated, do I call it personal life, business life? Do I just choose one or the other? But it really was, you know, so a person, if they, if they don't have a business, they could read it and get a lot out of it. But, but it really was rebuilding both of those because they both kind of crashed yeah. at the same time because... I was my business. So yeah. if, if one went up, I went up. If one went down, I went down. So 
Oh, we both went down. So it would basically, the book will help you learn how to balance it, right? So you won't become your business. Yeah, you know, I mean, over time, you know, what one of the things about crashing and burning and going through all of this stuff is after a while, you just have to go, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm spent. I'm exhausted. And you just pretty yeah. soon, you know, I mean, that, now I look at it. I'm like, my business is super successful. I'll, let me rephrase that. I don't want to I don't want to overstate my business is successful, super successful. Maybe not. But but we're very successful. Anyway, point is that doesn't have anything to do with me individually. That's what we have to learn is that something can be great. Something can be bad in the business, but that doesn't have to be you. That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. Cause I do I know when you say that it reminds me of some of the celebrities or the people that we think are like, they made it, you know, the wealthy ones. And you hear that they are going through depression and they are going, you know, it's just like, wow, what could possibly cause them to go through that? You know, so just because they have the money in the bank doesn't mean that everything is all good on the other side. So. Yeah, I, I think yeah. one of the things that I learned coming out of it was I, I've, I've, I've heard of people losing everything and then getting it back. And I've often wondered, like, how in the world do they do that? And I really think it's because they have an ability to say, that's not me. That, that thing crashed and burned. I didn't crash and burn. I'm I'm still really good at what I do. But that crashed and burned. Just, <laughs> yeah. I, I built one before. I'll just build another one. And I think that's the key is mm -hmm. that we we just have to learn that you know if we did it once, we do it again, and it's not us. We're, it, we're, we're not we're not that entity. Yes. Okay, that's good. So guys, make sure you go check out the book. Okay, so you won't you know your happiness will depend on your business because. Sometimes things goes up and down, you know, you can never, you can't control those, um, those circumstances. So we are coming to the end of this um, eye-opening conversation. Just to close tab, what, what advice can you provide to small business owners having to rebuild their business due to COVID? Well, one thing is uh, associate with the right people. Um, you know, you know, they, they don't, don't spend your time hanging around people that are naysayers. Don't spend your time around people that are just going to pat you on the back and say, you know, you can do this. I mean, you need, you really need to have people that are realistic, people that are there that can, can guide you and push you. I mean, you really, you, you, you have to have, um, uh, you know, a group of people. I, I, I founded, um, and if anybody's interested, they can they can contact me at tabpierce.com. I founded uh, peer groups uh, at what we call advisory boards. Um, uh, it, it's called refiners. Um, but you need people that are mentors. You have to have people that can hold you accountable. You have to have people that um, uh, that have been where you've been. And that's the key. I mean, you you, you have to have somebody that has that has experience and, you know, I, uh, and mentors, I mean, that, that's what we're talking about. And, and I, and, you know, I would say anybody who wants to reach out to me directly, they can do that at tabpierce.com um, and find me there. And that, you know, I'm, I'm more than willing to help where I can help. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for that um, powerful advice. Um, so do you have any upcoming event or projects that you want to tell us about? Um, yeah, I always have stuff going on. Um, <laughs> I have, um, uh, you know, through, through refiners, we just, um, in, uh, in September had a guest speaker, a gentleman by the name of Trevor Mawad, who wrote a book called it takes what it takes. Uh, he's Russell Wilson's mindset coach, business partner. That was phenomenal. Uh, in uh, December, our guest speaker is a gentleman by the name of Naveen Jain who uh, founded InfoSpace and, and Tellius and TalentWise, current uh, founder of Biome and um, Moon, or Moon Express. He's, uh, but he's a multi-billionaire. He's our speaker in December. People can, people can find out information on that at tabpierce.com. In November, we're putting together kind of an impromptu panel with um, some former um, uh, professional athletes, uh, baseball, potentially football. Um, so 
got a lot of those things coming up. It's just kind of a way to kind of give back and, and learn and, and, you know, selfishly get my name out there. Uh, but mm -hmm. if anybody, if anybody's interested, you know, obviously tabpierce.com for the book audible. If you're, if you're a listener instead of a reader, and uh, if you're a reader, if you're an old school reader, uh, like Amazon. So that's probably the best way people can kind of find me, hear about me and all that stuff. Okay. So um, so that's where people will find you. So other than the website, what other place or is it just the website, www.tabpierce.com? They can go to tabpierce.com, um, refiners.io. But if you go there today, you're going to be one of the early adopters. You're going to look at it and you're going to go, wow, this is nothing. But pretty soon, uh, we, we haven't launched it yet, but it's a community of entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. And um, we're, you know, you can sign up to be part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's a paid portion. There's a free portion. Um, but mm -hmm. that's going to be a growing community. But people can find me there and we'll, you know, that, that'll probably be my, my ultimate hangout place wow okay guys make sure you check out his website www.tabpierce.com i think that's where all the whole information is all the whole like all the things you mentioned so go check it out and if you're listening on a podcast don't worry we have the website link on this episode that you're listening right now and those watching the video just click the description of this video we have the in his website link there too so thank you so much, Tapiers, for stopping by and spending time with Connie Podcast. Our conversation today was pivotal, and I believe a lot of my listeners and viewers are drawing a lot of wisdom and insights on how they can successfully rebuild their business with no fear whatsoever. So on behalf of myself and my audience, it's a great pleasure having you, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, you do have a, all right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much, um, Piers, for coming. Okay, guys. So thank you, everyone, that tuned in. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, unfortunately, um, I can't even believe this. This marks the final episode of Entrepreneur Series for this year, just this year, 2020. I hope we can continue this series next year. With a heart of gratitude, I am so, so appreciative of all the guests that have come to this series and everyone that have tuned in every time we go live. And thank you to my loyal podcast listeners and those watching us right now on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. And those watching us on Facebook, of course. I can't forget my Facebook family. Thank you, everyone. Talking about YouTube, please make sure you click that subscribe button. And please go find us on YouTube, Venta with Honey Podcast. Click the subscribe button and share this video, okay? And all our social handles and the guest contact is on the description of this video that you're watching on YouTube right now. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Venta with Connie. If you're listening to us on a podcast, you can find our social handles and guest contact on the description of this episode. Once again, thank you, everyone. And I want to say... I love you and God loves you too. And this is your host, Connie, signing out. And I'll come back again next year by God's grace. Bye-bye.